Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we're talking about crucial and uh, external devices. When you're looking at going mobile, the costs go up and it is horrible. Now, the idea is to get this external device. Now, this enclosure comes in different sizes. It comes in different speeds. It comes with different casings. There's so much to look at these. I'm going to make a whole video in review of this. I'm also going to talk about Crucial right now because Crucial created and makes the P2s, the P1s, and they make uh, they make good stuff. Uh, you know, you have issues, but you don't have like issue issues, if that makes sense. So I, I, I'm just uh, sitting back and, um, you know, I, I, I picked up a P1 for a certain job I had once, and then I've been using the drive through one of these. Now, there was an issue with that drive. I'm not sure what happened, but it, it just crashed. And when it crashed, it crashed. Now, uh, the idea here is very simple. Like I, you don't need a really fast drive for one of these. Like this is uh, just a up to gigabit ten speeds. So you're you're sitting there and you're going, all right. If I'm doing ten gigabit speed per second, do I really need anything that's going over a thousand? Not really. Now these things will go up to like two thousand, I believe. I haven't even looked at these newer ones, but um, the, the the idea is that you don't need a super fast drive. Now the reason I was thinking about when this performed and everything was going good, the SN850. I was thinking, hey. Maybe I should just get another two terabyte and then instead of using one of these, get another external device and bada bing, bada boom, that's Thunderbolt 3. Now we're going 40 gigabits per second. I'm hitting nice speeds and I don't have to wait for stuff. Like we're going to get three, four times faster speeds with that, especially through the Thunderbolt on the old laptop. Now, uh, the idea then just becomes, well, why are we not? And what are the situations that we're going to come into? Now, at the time of this recording, I have built this PC in the back. And these are a few things that I looked at when I was building the PC. One of them was that it didn't have Thunderbolt. So there is a way to get a Thunderbolt on there and get it moving or replace the motherboard. There's some nice motherboards out there with Thunderbolt 3 now with AMD. So this is great. It, it, you know, it's called Thunderbolt 4 and it's great. It's great. Now on the other side, you might have a laptop and there you have Thunderbolt 3. So the question that I always get from people is, you know, will a device like this get me the speeds of Thunderbolt 3? And I haven't actually seen anybody achieve a full Thunderbolt 3 speeds with any of these that exist on the market. I have seen them get a nice up to, you know, maybe I would say 20 to 25 gigabit speed, but uh, gigabits per second, but I wouldn't say they've achieved the full amount. I believe that has to do with heating and the way they make these. Now, the reason why these are so expensive when it gets to that Thunderbolt 3 and when it gets to those high speeds is because of the licensing that exists with that. And it's just, they've kept the price pretty high. I mean, I would have bought a couple of these if they came down in price, but they're like, you know, there's different levels of them. There's some that advertise this fast speed, but you only get 20 gigabits per second. Other ones are like 30 and you, you do see that significance depending on the drive you're using. Um, but they're all like two, $300 in Canadian. So, I mean, I, they're up there and I've never seen the need to do that. Now, when I was looking at building the computer, I was going, do I, am I ever going to need that in the perspective of now versus later? And now I don't, but later I will. And uh, in my head, I'm just kind of like, hmm, what do I actually really need right now? And how does that fit the narrative? Now, I, I, again, I have a laptop that does Thunderbolt. Do I need to spend $300? That's the question. And, uh, uh, you know, all together to get a good one that I know with a drive that I paid another $300 for, I will have the $600 external device. And that's the, 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 the thing that we got to ask ourselves. Now, when you're looking on the computer, you're going to be looking at certain things. So I'm going to jump on the computer right now to show you that. A quick search on Amazon, just an external enclosure Gen 4, will show you this uh, idea of what I'm talking about. You, automatically, the sponsorships come up, and it's like the 3.1 Gen 2 drive. Okay, You're going to get that 10 gigabit per second speed, and you're looking, at, again, at hitting that 900 megabyte, 850 megabyte per second speed. You're not getting anything better than you would get with something like this at $27.99. Now, as you scroll down, you're going to see that the average pricing for these are between uh, between 25, 30, all the way up to 70, 80 bucks. Now that is because these, when, when you do any kind of search with the Gen 4 or anything like that, you're just going to get back to 
that typical kind of 3.1 Gen 2. Now, what you do need to do is type in the uh, Thunderbolt enclosure. Now, once you do this, what you're going to start to see is these bigger drives where you're actually going to see USB 4.0. Right, so you're seeing that 40 gigabits per second, and you want that number right there. So now, if you're looking at it and you're saying, well, this is good and all, and you know, will this reach the top speeds? I, again, you, you don't know, you gotta test it. And you gotta test it with a Gen 4 drive to see how fast that will take you. But at the end of the day, if you put something like a 970 uh, megabit per, megabytes per second uh, hard drive in there, you're, you're literally going to be able to see how fast these things go. Now, this has dropped in price here, the wavelength, right? Now, what you need to also do is when you click into it, you have to go see what is the actual deal of what speed is actually going to be getting, and then where are we going to be at with uh, the actual closeness to that 40 gigabit speed. Now, if this is saying I can get this theoretical speed up to 3940, then the Samsung, I don't need a Gen 4 drive, the Samsung will take me to that speed of 3500, making this very, very good buy. Now, I'm not saying I'm doubtful, I'm just saying that I've seen this before, and when I click on it, this works on my M1 Mac, but it keeps disconnecting. And this person did go, it's not especially fast with a Samsung 980. I will do some more tests to quantify, but that ranges for 100 megabytes per second, not gigabyte. So again, they're comparing this to a 980 EVO, when the 970 should be hitting 3500 on this, or 3300, whatever it's rated at. The, the idea that you're gonna get what you're, what you're actually like seeing as an advertisement is not always the case with these things, and you literally have to do your tests to see which ones will take you to where you need to go. A great example of this is the Sabrent one. I almost bought this one. I saw it on sale and I was like, you know, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. And we can see that this one has a Thunderbolt 3 technology enabling speeds, amazing speeds up to 1600 megabytes per second. Now, in my opinion, okay, when I do a quick calculation and I say, hey, how much is 40 gigabits per second to megabytes per second? Okay, and, and I'm just gonna do this, and I'm seeing like us oh, megabit, thanks, thank, thanks Google, 5,000, okay, and, and this is where I'm getting at. If I'm seeing 5,000 right here, and you're telling me you have a Thunderbolt that's gonna do amazing speeds up to 1,600 megabytes per second, there's something wrong with that picture. And we have to take a step back and we gotta ask ourselves, all right, what technology is in here and is it really gonna achieve what we want it to achieve? And if it doesn't, then is it worth the money? Because it seems like the other one was a little bit cheaper and could achieve what we needed to achieve. Now, again, this would take a Gen 4 drive in theory if it, it worked with the Thunderbolt 3 speed that it should. But this is only taking something small, which, I mean, the Crucial will fit here and work nicely with something like this. And I will probably get a nice speed of 1200 to, sorry, 800 to 900 max speed because I don't have a Thunderbolt 3 on this computer on the AMD. But on my laptop, I should, in theory, get 1600 like full speed with this hard drive because I do have a Thunderbolt 3 there. So as you can see, the decisions has to come with workflow again. And I'm gonna to touch up on workflow because I wanna make sure that everybody is looking at the big picture here. You're investing money into things. And then from that, you're putting in a cost per use case scenario per project, per thing that you're doing. Your workflow has to dictate what you need and what you want in a way where you are able to put money towards that budget and make sense of it all so you're not wasting money. So you're making money. Our goal is to invest so we can get money back. I look at things and I say to myself, where is the value here? Now, when I'm looking at the Cam Canon R6 that I'm using right now, and yeah, I got 30 minutes and then it's gonna die on me. And I'm like, is this, is this, is this real? You know, now it's only on 4K, it's not on 1080p, but I've been shooting everything on 4K. That's why I bought the bloody thing. They told me it's gonna be better than that and blah, 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 blah. It ain't happening. Now, I'm, I'm getting an R5, that's the goal. So, you know, will that be better for my workflow? Well, if I don't have to be sitting around waiting for the damn thing to do it, this, cam this camera is a good, like, B, B cam. You can have it, it's good to have there. It's good to, I'm gonna put it on the side, I'm probably gonna keep it, put it on the side, I'm gonna get rid of everything else, and 
you know, use that as my second camera. That's it. Like, the R5 is supposed to just film on, like, you know, undisturbed 4K plain 24Ps that I need anyways for these kind of videos where sometimes I am shooting bulk. So this is the workflow. Now I'm gonna take all that data and say, say my computer, I, I, I'm just moving stuff over and I need stuff on that drive. The question is space versus speed. Th that's where we come to that kind of scenario where we, we get to look at it and go, what are we really filming and what are we storing on this? So if I'm out on a shoot and I need to do the workflow quickly and that is basically clips and it's kind of like fill, fill the card, get it on here, get it off. And we have a workflow that way, then that makes sense to, you know, get speed. But if you're doing long format, well, that changes everything. Now you're not looking at only speed, you're looking at more of the capacity and you're saying to yourself can I really sit there and go for speed and capacity based on the money I'm making the investment again plays out in the long run of the time you are waiting but if you're just doing like if I have my Canon R and that's you know that can shoot forever and I shoot two hours of a client stuff and I fill that card up and I transfer it over and then I start with another card I'm only doing that once, but if I'm going back and forth trying to move everything and we need the cards on set because maybe we ran out of, you know, scenarios that oh, whatever we didn't prepare for, now we're looking at that and we're saying, all right, how does that fit the narrative overall of what I need? So take a step back. I'm going to do a full review on uh, a, a couple of these that I've seen that I'm probably going to be buying and why or why not based on what we're seeing there. I'm also going to do a review on this kind of a drive. And what I'll probably do is remove the one I have in my computer right now of the Western Digital, put it on here, because the question I've gotten uh, is, well, what happens when this, does this max out, max out? And it's like, I know, and will Gen 4 perform on this? And it's gonna be like, no, but I'm, I wanna just do a number test so people can have that. Um, now I might change my mind, I don't know, because I'm just kind of sitting there going, is that even worth showing somebody? Um, but like, at the end of the day, you know, it's one of those things you got to sit down, you got to think about, and you got to put it into perspective and say to yourself, what is it that I need? What is it that I want? And how does it fit the narrative overall? Um, Gen 4 in these things is not really worth it. So uh, Gen 3 is like, you know, you're getting up to that 3,000 megabytes per second, 3,500 on one of these, and then that would be more worth it. So uh, something to think about. I just want to make this video because I know people have been asking about it and people want some real answers about it. And we're not really getting that. And I know online there's a lot of people and a lot of sales and they just kind of don't always make sense. Uh, that being said, questions, comments.